So by now we've seen basics of logic, we know what our notation for sets are and whatnot. We're now going to be looking at quantifiers and negations. So there are two types of quantifiers that we're going to be concerning ourselves with the existential quantifier and the universal quantifier. So when we look at logical statements, we see lots of things like for all x this is true, or there exists a y such that this is true. What we often need to understand is how these behave when we negate them in the sense of what is the opposite if a for all statement is true, what is the correspondingly false statement? For example, if all cats are black, then what is the negation of that? What's the correspondingly false statement? Well, it would be there is a cat that is not black. The negation of all cats being black is not all cats are not black. It's that there is at least one cat which is not black. So that's the negation of the universal quantifier. The negation of the existential quantifier would be there is a chair with two legs. And the way we're gonna negate that is by showing that any chair has some number of legs which is not two, okay. Let's get into it. What we're going to look at now are quantifiers. There are two types of quantifiers that we're going to concern ourselves with. The existential quantifier and the universal quantifier. So the existential quantifier is given by this backwards capital E symbol. And the universal quantifier is given by the upside down A symbol. The universal quantifier is observed in statements such as for all, for any, for each, and so on. For example, Let's say we want to write that the square of a real number is non-negative. Well, we can write that as for all x in R, x squared is greater than or equal to zero. If we wanted to write the sum of the squares of a rational number and a real number is non-negative, then we could write this as for all x in R and for all y in Q, x squared plus y squared is greater than or equal to zero. The existential quantifier is observed in statements such as there exists, there is, we can find, and so on. So for example, let's look at the statement in the set of natural numbers, there exist numbers which are odd. So we can write this as there exists n in n such that n is 2m plus 1 for some m in n. Remember that an odd number is just an even number plus 1, and any even number is divisible by 2. What's very important to observe is the order of the quantifiers. Let's consider the proposition p of x, y to mean y is the parent of x. Then, if we look at the statement for all x, there exists y such that p of x, y, then this means that for all x, there is a parent y. If we consider, on the other hand, the statement there exists y such that for all x p of x, so we've reversed the quantifiers, then this means that there is a person that is the parent of every child. Of course, these are drastically different statements. Now we want to look at the very important topic of negations. If p is a proposition, then not p is written as follows, and that's the proposition which is true if the proposition is false, and false if the proposition is true. For example, if p is the proposition that I can read, then not p is the proposition that I cannot read. So if p is true, then not p is false. If p is false, then not p is true, and not not p is just p again. Let's take a look at how the quantifiers behave under negation. Let x denote books, and let p of x be the proposition that x has more than three pages. We'll consider the statement for all x p of x. This just means that all books have more than three pages. And let's think about how we could negate that. If this statement is true, what's the correspondingly false statement? Or if this statement is false, what's the correspondingly true statement? Well, to negate the statement that all books have more than three pages, we just need to find a book that has less than three pages. So that is, there is a book such that the number of pages is less than three. We could write, there exists x such that not p of x. In particular, we observe that the negation of the universal quantifier, the negation of the for all statement, is an existential quantifier, or an existential statement. Look at another example. Suppose that p of x is the proposition that the chair x has two legs. So when we write, there exists x such that p of x, what we mean is that there is a chair with two legs. 
To negate such a statement, we need to show that no such thing exists. Or in other words, all chairs must have some number of legs, which is not equal to two. In particular, what we see here is that the negation of an existential quantifier is a universal quantifier. So if we negate a there exists statement, we'll end up with a for all statement. In this case, the negation of there exists x such that p of x is negated to for all x not p of x. Get some practice problems now to see if we understand what we're talking about. Try to write out the negation of the following statements. The first one is for all x, y in the real numbers, x plus y is less than 4. The second one, the second statement that we want to negate is for all m in z, there exists n in n such that m is greater than n the solution to these practice problems to see how you went. Recall that we want to write down the negation of the following statements, the first one being for all x, y in the reals, x plus y is less than 4. Well, we need to negate a universal quantifier, that's going to be an existential quantifier, so we need to produce x, y in R such that x plus y is greater than or equal to 4. The second statement being for all m in z, there exists n in n such that m is greater than n. So there's a couple of quantifiers here. We have both a universal quantifier and an existential quantifier. But if we think about the statement for all integers m, we can find an n such that m is greater than n. The way to negate that would be that there is some integer m such that regardless of what n you pick, so for all n in n, m must be less than or equal to n. In the logical notation, there exists m in z such that for all n in n, m is less than or equal to n.